Textual difficulties are a favorite target for critics of the Bible. But one of the problems that critics often suffer is being too hasty when pointing out contradictions. In biblical narratives, this often happens when they don't pay close enough attention to the details of a story. One such difficulty is the manner of Saul's death. According to the author of 1 Samuel, Saul committed suicide. After being wounded by the enemy, Saul understands that all is lost. He realizes that he's sustained a mortal injury. He asks that his armor bearer finish the job, but the man refuses. So Saul falls upon his own sword and kills himself. Here's what the text says. The Philistines overtook Saul and his sons, and the Philistines struck down Jonathan and Abinadab and Malkishua, the sons of Saul. The battle pressed hard against Saul, and the archers found him, and he was badly wounded by the archers. Then Saul said to his armor bearer, Draw your sword and thrust me through with it, lest these uncircumcised come and thrust me through and mistreat me. But his armor bearer would not, for he feared greatly. Therefore Saul took his own sword and fell upon it. Thus Saul died, and his three sons and his armor bearer, and all his men on the same day together. So the text makes it clear that Saul died by his own hand. But later, a man visits David with news about Saul's demise. David asks him about the battle, and the man says that the king and his sons have been killed. When asked about the nature of their deaths, the man says this, By chance I happened to be on Mount Gilboa, and there was Saul leaning on his spear, and behold, the chariots and the horsemen were close upon him. And when he looked behind him, he saw me and called to me, and I answered, Here I am. And he said to me, Who are you? I answered him, I am an Amalekite. And he said to me, Stand beside me and kill me, for anguish has seized me, and yet my life still lingers. So I stood beside him and killed him, because I was sure that he could not live after he had fallen. Saul kills himself before his position is overrun by the enemy. He's afraid that he will suffer at the hands of the Philistines, who will likely torture him to death, so he takes his own life. It's a scenario that's probably played out many times on battlefields throughout human history. But that's not the Amalekite story. It's very different. So why does the Bible say this Amalekite gets credit for killing Saul? Well, here's where we have to understand what's going on in the narrative. In the first account, the biblical writer is describing things as they happened. The second account comes from the Amalekite man who was trying to take credit for something that he didn't do. It's important to understand the difference between what the biblical writer claims and what the Amalekite claims. The books of 1 and 2 Samuel record the events surrounding the creation of the United Monarchy and the transfer of leadership from Saul's dynasty to David's. When you're dealing with this kind of subject matter, you're dealing with people. And people do all kinds of things in the pursuit of power. If you know anything about 1 Samuel, you know that it shows just how contentious David's relationship with Saul really was. Saul was a deeply troubled king who was murderously jealous of David and tried to kill him on several occasions. This was a well-known fact at the time. People understood that there was a rivalry between these two men. But there's a very simple explanation for what's going on here in the text. All we have to do is reconstruct a plausible scenario with those bits of information in mind. Let's say this Amalekite man understood the rivalry between David and Saul. It wasn't a secret. The man apparently does have Saul's crown and armlets, probably because he stripped the king's body of anything of value when he was dead. This kind of thing has been done on battlefields for thousands of years. Well, these items might be more trouble than they're worth unless he can cash them in. So he creates a cover story, and it's brilliant because the man covers all of his bases. On the one hand, he's responsible for killing Saul, David's most dangerous enemy. But on the other hand, he describes it as an act of mercy. No matter which way David might lean, the man figures that he can't be faulted, especially when he's handed over the symbols of Saul's kingship. The man figured he'd be rewarded for his claims, but he wasn't counting on the fact that David didn't view things the same way. For David, the idea of killing Saul was absolutely unthinkable. He'd had opportunities to kill the king and was even pressured by his men to do so. But he refuses because taking action against Saul meant acting against God. The Amalekite man thought that he'd profit from the king's death by falsely taking credit for killing him. It would have been better for him to tell the truth, whatever that was, than to lie about being responsible for Saul's death. So the solution to this difficulty is unbelievably simple, as long as you understand what's going on in the text. Because if you aren't paying attention to the details, 
then you might think that there's a contradiction here when there isn't one.